Hello comic fans, here's Al Grey on a pretty lazy Sunday morning and I thought it would be a good idea to talk a bit about four comics uh, that I read in the last couple of weeks. All of them have in common that they are from Europe. We have two collected editions of pretty classic lore, um, especially the Sven Janssen one here gave me the impression that it would be maybe a good idea to smoke a pipe while doing this overview slash review. But I've never smoked a pipe in all my life, but just for style, you know. And uh, on the left hand side, we have some kind of artist edition or one very classic and famous uh, Spirou comic by André Franquin. But more about that later. I want to talk first about uh, the by far most recent comic here, and that's Nico. Three albums, um, each of them around 60 pages, collected in this beautiful edition here uh, by Phoenix Comics. Um, with spot varnish and so on. Uh, the original French one came out uh, about 10 years ago. Um, and yeah, this is a pastiche, a collage of many things, um, a story around this character, Nico, who was inspired by the singer of uh, the Velvet Underground, Nico, which has some allusions and, and references uh, in the comic here as well. Um, as it is rich with pop, pop cultural references. Um, and the story itself is a pastiche or collage um, of many well-written and uh, well-known tropes, but uh, for a pretty original new story, a uh, very pulpy story, but um, has enough realistic feel to, to be pretty gripping. And uh, despite of the silly premise, um, oh, However, uh, the aliens in Roswell, this was a real thing, you know, and uh, but the world in uh, Nico reacted differently uh, to these aliens. Uh, it starts here with an Enid Blyton reference, uh, the five friends there, the four kids with the dog and uh, the fair headed girl here, haired girl, uh, that's our Nico in her younger days. So starts with Enid Blyton, but uh, it will use stuff from here and there and left and right from all of our pop cultural history of the last decades, as you will see. So the world and Nico uh, reacted differently to these aliens. Uh, Truman decided against uh, Eisenhower that uh, it would be a better idea to use the alien tech in, uh, in public so to speak, uh, openly uh, to so that the US had an ad would have an advantage um, against their op uh, opponents um, around Stalin here. Unfortunately, Stalin had an <laughs> uh, alien vessel of his own uh, right there. So the world, in short, in 1966 looked very differently than our uh, world today. Uh, flying cars and vessels all over and uh, reminded me a bit of this Mr. X book uh, where, the Hernandez, where the Hernandez brothers uh, drew the first uh, couple of issues. This is the future that <laughs> I imagined as a kid. Uh, that's how the future should look like and this Jules Vernish uh, kind of stuff, you know, and uh, but we were a bit betrayed. Uh, the only thing that our technology gave us are these mobiles and we are a bit of a two-sided sword in my opinion. Uh, anyhow, and so we have a combination of the swinging 60s and um, nice future tech and a pretty gripping uh, yeah, crime espionage tale that gives uh, enough reasons to show beautiful women in their underwear. But here we have an example of how they squeezed in these pop cultural references. Uh, so we in a Russian submarine, we have a different version of Captain Haddock and Tintin and the funny professor out of Tintin 
in Germany it's uh, Professor Bienlein <laughs> and um, they reappear here and homage to lots of different stuff here and there's even a bit Pacific Rim later on uh, don't know if that was really uh, meant to be but that's pretty uh, clear that's uh, Alfred Hitchcock being interviewed by um, Truffaut over there he just appears in these four panels while Nico is hunted by this guy here and the last example there is one guy called Bob Dylan over there uh, practicing his uh, one song while he was captured by the evil being in the story here I don't want to spoil anything but this book here is yeah it's it's really pleasant it's it's a nice silly uh, comic here we have even a bit of um, references to a Blake and Mortimer by uh, Jacobs another of these uh, classic European comics don't know if I really can recommend uh, Sven Janssen to you because this one here is really yeah um, something for old guys like me uh, drawn by one of my secret favorites Edouard Edon uh, he's the one for the classic uh, uh, kind of cartooning here with the pipes and all and uh, it's about this uh, photo journalist with this high-tech gear here and uh, he does reports uh, with his family together with his wife and son in Africa and of course there are villains and of course there are wild animals and uh, the people there here they don't shy away to kill the animals to save some human beings so <laughs> let's get real people uh, I don't know it's uh, it's a bit silly of course uh, especially I don't know how uh, far you will come with a uh, Volkswagen bully in Africa but uh, they really experience a lot of very old-fashioned um, adventures just look at the uh, hairdo of the woman and in a way these stories here are all a bit like this hairdo old-fashioned and uh, a good European saves Africa almost single-handedly and if you can take these kind of stories um, yeah you will have lots of fun with this here um, and I really love my Edouard Edon once in a while but this is of all his works I guess uh, the one that aged uh, not as good as the others let's say this collected edition or rather collector's edition uh, is something I guess old dudes like me have waited for a long time um, Jean Graton's Michel Veillon. Um, the France collected editions were collector's editions uh, were published some years ago, but now we have uh, German translations as well by Egmont Comic Collection. And this is a great thing. I mean, I'm not at all today in, in to car races or racing cars. Uh, I actually find it pretty stupid. Uh, or, cars uh, driving circles and and yeah it's not my thing anymore but it was when I was a boy I, I liked everything about it the look of the cars uh, the sound they that they made even the stank <laughs> uh, that they uh, they did and um, and I liked these Michel Veillon uh, comics I I was not uh, uh, I haven't read uh, the the very old comics that here uh, are collected um, I guess when did it start uh, it started 1957 so I was born 1967 10 years later or so yeah uh, but uh, this uh, series lasted a long long time and it really helped that Jean uh, Graton um, was really a fan of all this uh, Formula One circus so 
it wasn't wasn't at all uh, the same story told over and over again uh, but he found very interesting and clever perspectives to reignite your interest uh, for Michel Veillon and his car factory and the brand of these Veillon cars with each album. The last book of today's bunch is this one here, Le Dictateur et le Champignon, um, The Dictator and the Mushroom of the series of adventures of Spirou and Fantasio. This is uh, Dupuis' very own or version original uh, artist edition. And um, I have the story of the dictator and the champignon um, already in this collected edition, but just for size comparisons here. Um, it's yeah the artist edition way of presenting the stuff in facsimile reprints and in their original size. Here we have one pretty famous um, panel right there. The whole story here is for the most part a political satire, uh, like Charlie Chaplin's The Great Dictator, even though it starts with lots of Mazupilami slapstick, and I really love uh, the Mazupilami here. It's one of Europe's finest uh, comic creations, I feel. Um, but later on, it became, especially when you think that this is a comic aimed at children, a pretty bitter and, and harsh satire on uh, yeah, populist, propagandist, uh, dictator leadership. Uh, Fantasio's evil cousin, um, is now the leader in this made-up uh, banana republic and he poses a bit like a mix between uh, Hitler and Charlie Chaplin in his huge representation rooms over there and has a speech there here and all these poses are very accurately um, taking out of out photographs from Hitler as uh, of course the symbol here is a play if you will on the swastika as it is this silly uh, bird there is a play on uh, the German eagle and, and the stuff here so yeah political satire but spoiler spoilers it all ends well of course uh, because of a substance of um, the, the Comte du Champignac, the inventor friend of Spirou and Fantasio. Uh, the, the substance melts metal and... Um, right. <laughs> like uh, with this uh, sculpture there, which just implodes there, but when you apply this on weaponry and tanks and so on, you have a, even more um, of an effect there. You can't, fortunately, you can't do war, a proper war, with this kind of uh, cannons there or helmets. Uh, and so everything uh, ends well, at least in this comic world here, <laughs> with these tanks there. So it's a kind of a nice, uh, very. Yeah, this this feels right for a, a kids' comic story uh, about some stuff that ha happened and and maybe will happen in the real world uh, over and over again, unfortunately. But we can find some solace in beautiful panels like this one here. And overall, this is a very nice book. And uh, of course, in, in the back, you get the colored version here, uh, which wasn't necessary in, in my opinion, but some other illustrations and extra stuff here as well. And uh, color guide. 
So, um, yeah, that's all for now. And thanks for listening and watching. Goodbye. <laughs>